Welcome to the short introduction to Tumul Type. Today I'm going to show you the first steps that will lead you to creating interactive web animations and this is the project that we are going to build. So we've got a character that flies into the scenery and a speech bubble coming in and also we will add a little bit of interactivity so when the user clicks on this laptop down here on the stage uh, he will be navigated to a new URL. And to round it off we will also optimize this for mobile versions, for mobile screens, so that we've got a slightly different um, layout for uh, portrait mode as well. So let's get started. Um, we will start from scratch. So I start with an empty comp composition. So this is pretty much what Tumult Type looks like when you open it up for the fir very first time. Right now, it's nothing inside your scenery. So first off, we will import some assets and this is pretty straightforward. You can just get any images you like, uh, for instance, created in Illustrator, Photoshop, you name it, and take your assets and drag them onto the stage, onto the stage, and they will be placed within the project right away and you can start creating, just like that. As you can see, um, they will also be placed here on the timeline on the left-hand side, and this order of this timeline also indicates the order, the visual hierarchy on the um, stage itself. So all the elements that are on the top are displayed in the front and elements that are on the bottom are displayed in the background. So in order to get the background to the background, we just drag it down underneath all the other elements so it will be displayed in the background and we can lock it by clicking this little icon here toggle lock um, which makes it not accessible anymore so we don't uh, accidentally move it around anymore so it's fixed there <coughs> next off we can modify the character a little bit make shrinking it down moving him um, sideways from the stage and this is the power of a visual authoring tool we can just rearrange and create our scenery just like that, moving things around, speech bubble goes, oops, sorry for that, up here, also making it a little bit smaller, and moving the table around a little bit, putting the laptop on the table, maybe select both elements and move them slightly to the left, and there we go. This is already our initial scene, and it took me just a couple of seconds to get this in order. Now we can start creating the animation. So we've got our initial um, state of the animation ready since the character will be coming in from the offside on the left hand side and the speech bubble flying in from above. <clears throat> now how do we create the animation? This is very very easy and straightforward in Tumult Type. We simply use this record button down here to start recording our animation, then we use the playhead on the timeline to define the time span that we want to create the animation with. For instance, um, yeah, let's say two seconds here. And then we define the final state of the animation. Hence, moving the character to the right hand side. And you can see this blue line indicating the transition that the character will undergo and if you watch carefully automatically two keyframes for each property are created down here so if you want to modify and fine tweak it you can go always go down here um, they are sensitive to the element selected up here and tweak and modify it but you can also just visually reposition everything you see that it will automatically be updated um, at the same time, we can get the speech bubble to fly in. As you can see, it's very, very easy to create simultaneous animations just like that. And if I scrub down the timeline, it will already indicate um, the animation that's taking place. Already looks quite well. So um, in order to not create uh, any further animations by mistake, I disable the record mode. And I can use the play pause button down here to get an impression of what it looks like. Um, 
it doesn't look too bad, but still there are some minor adjustments that I would prefer to make here. First off, the speech bubble and the character fly in at the very same time with the same speed. Doesn't look that good. So I take the entire animation track of the speech bubble and I can simply shrink it down a little bit so that it, and move it around, sorry, um, to make it appear, to start the animation at a later point in time and make it appear a little bit faster, just like that. And another thing that I just want to do, make this a little bit faster as well, probably. So if I shrink down the time span, of course, the animation takes place faster. And in order to make this a little bit more fancy, I can use different easings. Easings means the time speed, or let's say it's speed that the animation uses for taking place. And per default, the easing is in and out. So it starts slower, um, then becomes faster and slows down, as you can see in this curve down here. Um, but in order to get this a little bit more vivid, fancy effect, I can use, for instance, also predefined the back um, easing, which means um, that the animation goes further than the actual endpoint and then slowly um, goes back. And I can simply choose this like that. And again, have my display here. And there you go. The character moves further and bounces a little bit back, which gives it a cartoonic um, impression and a different kind of animation speed for the speech bubble and the character makes it also appear a little bit uh, more appealing for my taste. And there we go. We already have our first animation going just like that. And now you can imagine how easy it is to rearrange all the other elements and how to create animations in the first place, just like that. Um, now for the second part, we want to add interactivity to elements. And now don't be scared. You don't have to write a single line of code here. Since, anime, uh, since Hype is very, very designer friendly, you can just use the actions panel in the property inspector on the right hand side. And while an element is selected, like this tablet here, or the, the laptop here, you can define what actions should take place at certain points in time or at certain events, like on mouse click, which means, or tap, um, which means when the user clicks or taps on this element, something should take place. And I can select from a predefined selection, for instance, start or stop timelines. But here I want to go to URL, which means open up a new website, which pretty much translates to um, create a link on this element. And I just have to type in the uh, target address. Um, for instance, tourthehype.com. Now I can also define whether or not it should open up in a new window. And that's all. Right here inside the tool, within the authoring tool, of course, it doesn't work, which would be pretty annoying, by the way, if I uh, would click on an element, it would and it would um, open up a new URL right away. But if I preview my project in the browser using this icon up here, uh, and if, if I don't want to use Chrome, I also can choose from all the other browsers that I have on my system. Um, but here I want to use Chrome. And there we go. Already working with the animation. And the link is also already working, just like that without writing a single line of code. Awesome. But as you can imagine, if I don't optimize this for devices, it gets shrinked down and it's not using the space properly here. So right now I want to optimize my um, composition for different layouts, for different screens. And this can also be done very easily within Hype. I have this. Uh, option here, which is called layouts. And if I click on it, I can add new layout versions of my current scene. For instance, 
a version for iPhones, which pretty much creates a media query breakpoint. As you can see, starting from 320 pixels up to 600 pixels, it's pretty fun. I can also customize this and everything that's larger than 600 pixels will use this initial animation. Um, I can add more layouts if I want to, but let's stick with that right now and optimize this. Um, let me quickly zoom out a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing here. And this is one of the biggest challenges here is uh, using uh, smartphones in a portrait mode means we have a different uh, side ratio than the average screen. <clears throat> so uh, we might end up using um, elements that are not optimized. For instance, the background is um, wider than, um, ha has more width than height. So uh, we would load more image than we actually need. So we need to exchange the background. First of all, getting rid of the old one, getting rid of these elements that I don't want to use anymore. And I have already prepared a background uh, special um, uh, especially designed for um, mobile versions and I can just start dragging it in here again placing it to the bottom there we go and the good thing is we already have the animations we created before and all the interactivity so it's basically a copy of this primary layout and we can just tweak it to our needs here so for instance, moving the character a little bit further down, of course, we need to adjust the final position as well. There we go. And the speech bubble as well. And our table and position, but this is the beauty of having a visual design surface. It's done in an instant. Okay, here we need to adjust a little bit further. And starting from up here. And there we go. If I preview it in a browser now again and take a look at the device preview um, for the iPhone, it's very well laid out and done and I can again use the interactivity and just like that it works like a charm. All right, um, last but not least, let's take a quick look at the published process since we have only been using the preview. Now our project is pretty much done. Um, we should probably save it first, but um, then we can use export um, as HTML. We can also export movies, of course, um, but uh, the default version is um, export an HTML5 HTML5 folder. Uh, we could also export dashboard or iBook author widgets or the Adobe OAM widget, which allows us to place it inside InDesign, Dreamweaver, WordPress, um, you name it, pretty similar to what you used to have with uh, Edge Animate. Um, it's very straightforward that Hype is supporting the same um, folder type here, um, which allows you to embed it as a single file, as a way, basically. But default, again, folder, let me quickly show you, just like that. I have already prepared it here. Save and replace. And let's take a quick look at it, what it looks like. This is the project that I created. It creates an HTML5, uh, HTML file and resources. Here's all that the project needs. So it's basically just these two um, items that you need to upload on your server, or you can also start it from the file system. There you go, opening your project in the browser. And there you go. This is it. Um, this are, these are just uh, scratching the surface, of course, of the potentials that you have with uh, Tumult Hype. I hope I was able to show you um, how very easy it is to get started and to make your first steps. So this was the first steps tutorial, <laughs> obviously. Um, stay tuned for more and make sure to download all the project files and the assets and play around with it. Have fun and happy animating. Oh,